Hi, this is Jim Barnes, and uh, as you know, I've got an intention of uh, improving my home so that it consumes, um, well, it makes as much energy as it consumes. I'm going to call it a net zero energy home. And uh, in order to make that happen, uh, the first step along the way is to have an energy audit. And so I've hired Rick Evans from Paradigm Energy Services mm -hmm. to diagnose the problems in my home and prescribe a remediation for it and uh, so that I can then um, have a really efficient home with the intention of being as little as zero energy. So Rick, thanks a lot for coming. Absolutely, looking um, forward to it. It's uh, gonna be a great video, gonna be a great opportunity for us to make uh, big improvements to the home. When we were looking at these walls earlier, we basically found out that there was only the foam on the exterior underneath the siding. Yep. And then when we drilled a couple holes, we found out there wasn't any insulation in most of the exterior walls. Yep. And so I'm definitely going to recommend blowing cellulose into those walls. That happens from the exterior. We're not going to really have to do much from the interior at all. You won't have to do anything with, you know, finishing anything. It'll be all from the exterior. Yeah. Um, so basically they'll take off strips of siding, drill some holes, high density, uh, high pack cellulose. You know, hit, make sure we can hit every cavity. You're going to have to do that below and above every window, uh, okay. door, that type of thing. Sure. You know, most of the above grade walls, uh, we're looking at around, you know, eleven to $1,200 cost. Uh, but that was going to save over $200 a year, about $220 a year. Okay. Um, so that had a, a payback of just, just over five years. So under six years. All right, well, one of the things on our way down to the basement um, I want to talk about, too, is we found out that a lot of your exterior doors, even though this is a buffered area, yep. obviously that door out there is anything but sealed, and this none of this area out here is insulated. But with these doors, I mean, these are hollow core doors, right. um, uninsulated doors, and then they do have some weather stripping, so that's good. That's going to help with some of the air filtration, um, and it does have a sweep that doesn't look like it's an incredibly effective sweep. So I'm going to recommend a, a new insulated steel door. Uh, the front door is a cool old door, so... Whether or not you replace it, I mean, it's got some neat glass in it and whatnot, I would probably recommend weatherizing it if you don't want to replace it altogether. Yeah. And even actually, um, when I was talking about weather stripping on doors, weather stripping on windows is another huge thing, too. You know, at the bottom of the windows where the window is actually closed, mm -hmm. at the top and on the yeah. sides, quite often that's a great spot to get some new weather stripping because that's a, a thing that, you know, after sure. 20 years, those seals yeah. go bad as well. Pretty simple, cheap, five bucks at the hardware store. Right. Slap some new stuff down so you can feel it when you push that window down. There's a little bit of a sponge to it yeah. when it's pushing it down. Um, if windows don't have locks like this, you know, adding locks, window locks, so that yeah. they really do seal in the winter time, um, all makes a huge difference. So yeah, so this is definitely there's lots of stuff that we can do down here uh, with the uninsulated rim and band joists. This is a good shot here of showing us. The floor is fairly warm, but then how much colder the rim and band joist and the concrete wall are. One of the best paybacks, and it is really common, is the foundation walls. With these being concrete, and as you can see, the rim and band joists are all exposed as well. So yeah. basically you've only got an 8-inch block, and concrete only has a, you know, insulation of about 0.1 per inch. I mean, it's really, okay. really nominal. It really right. allows heat and moisture to come through very, very easily. It's best insulated on the exterior, but obviously at this point of the home, it'd be a lot of digging. Right. So typically um, in retrofit cases, we wind up insulating from the inside. I would recommend either a spray foam or a blue board or rigid foam of some kind. Um, take it down to at least, at least to the, if possible, um, to the frost line. But if not, obviously in these particular cases, there's only a couple feet exposed. I would definitely at least hit that and it would make yeah. a tremendous difference. Okay. The spray foams work really well for that. Often, too, because it's really tricky in this kind of an area where it's a crawl space to be able to actually get into these areas to put blocks of foam or something can be really mm -hmm. tedious for an, uh, right. an installer where if you've got one guy with his rig and he can be climbing through and just sh -sh 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 spraying it up, yeah. it's a great insulator. It has one of the highest R values of any insulation um, per inch, plus it air seals as it goes. So that's, okay. that's why it winds up being a premium product for this. So okay. that'll, that'll make a huge difference. And this says, um, you know, we're thinking that'd be around 500 bucks, usually five to 600 bucks for most homes. It's a few bucks a linear foot mm -hmm. um, for your rim and band joist area. Um, this is going to save basically almost $200 a year that that would save you in your heating costs. Um, so that's under three years, about two and a half years to pay for that. Cool. So that would be really quick turnaround. And again, you know, I can see the rafters and the ceiling. So I know, or I'm assuming that if they're buried, they're not buried very deep. 
that's called thermal bridging. Yep. So there's, uh, there's, you know, that cold or warm air, whatever it winds up being seasonally, is going to be transferring through that framing. How many inches was that? Uh, it's about five. Four to five. So is that like so a So that's an R, R let's see, cellulose has an R value usually around three, three and a half per inch. And this is pretty loose and kind of lumpy and so, you know, that's probably, uh, you know, R15-ish, something like that. So got a long ways to go. <clears throat> the one of the things I noticed right away is, I mean, there's definitely some ridge cap vent in here, but there aren't any real soffit vents. Um, there are some, but some of them are blocked off. Mm -hmm. So the whole venting thing is going to be real key. And another thing I'd like, you know, same thing, like let's follow. That electric. See, yeah, see where that goes through. See, okay, there's a good example. See how dirty that fiberglass is? Mm -hmm. That's just from airflow coming through that little tiny hole around yep. that plug. Yeah. So yeah, again, just following all these little wires, everything, and, uh, and sealing them up, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so then a little bit more about the sealing that we could talked about earlier. Basically, with uh, once we get everything prepped and sealed off, mm -hmm. um, you know, was really once the cost of the cellulose, you know, we're looking at only about you know between six hundred and a thousand bucks basically for um, cellulose. We have a few different areas of the attic that have different amounts of cellulose. So once you kind of average those out, we're probably about five to six years um, to pay that thousand dollars back. All right, let's go ahead and get this blower door hooked up then. We depressurize the house to 50 pascals, basically sucking a bunch of air out of the home to a known pressure. The meter that I'll show you here in a minute also then gives me a reading of how many cubic feet per minute are actually leaving the house under that known pressure. We can then crunch some numbers to find out how leaky the home is compared to other homes its size and then also how many air exchanges per hour we've got in the home. We need to have the homes breathe to a certain degree and have so many air exchanges per hour. Basically, 0.35 air exchanges per hour is the kind of industry standard to make sure that we've got enough air to fuel our combustion appliances and enough fresh air intake for our little oxygen-loving cells. So on the left side of this meter here, it basically is showing us our pressure. Then the right side is going to wind up showing us then our cubic feet per minute of volume leaving this, leaving the home. So as this thing kind of gets ramped up here, as long as it stays in the door, it is. All right, so we're at about 50, minus 50 pascals, and we're at about 2,650 cubic feet per minute, which is almost double of what it could be. Um, as far usually around 1300 to 1400 is what most homes we like to see them at of this size. So we're able to, we'll be able to cut that number in half before we have to worry about the house being too tight. And even if we go more than that, then we can wind up adding mechanical ventilation and whatnot at that point if we want to. But this gives us a baseline to kind of start with. So once I've taken my blower door readings, it doesn't even really matter anymore if, you know, if it's right at 50 pascals or not. It just it can do its own thing. It's just basically creating that negative pressure is still there. So I'm going to go back to these same areas I looked at. Some of them are going to show up the same, um, you know, but you start seeing actually like those little swales that you can kind of see up there. That's actually indicating to me that there's some airflow in that cavity. See how above that trim there, how it looks like a bunch of little flames, little blue flames. That's basically cold outside air coming up. So yeah, stuff around this trim here is real exasperated here, where you can see the same kind of thing above that door trim. You can see those little fingers of air coming in there. Real common. You know, so that'll be an easy fix. You know, just basically we'll probably wind up, you know, popping this trim off, caulking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty simple stuff mostly. The simple version is just to caulk them in place. Um, right. And once you've done a lot of the other improvements, what we can do is I can come back and we can put the blower door on again, see how that sits. Um, if we really want to make some additional improvements, quite often what we can do and see some huge improvements is popping off the trim, pulling out whatever insulation is there, if anything, and then using that window foam mm -hmm. um, that's going to expand, but not so much that you can't open your windows. That's right. kind of a key factor. But popping these off, putting uh, you know that foam in there, 
skim, letting it dry, skimming that down, putting these back up. Okay. Um, and a lot of times people, if they want to change out their trim and whatever, that's a great time to do that. Or you can really carefully remove this trim and probably reuse the same trim. That was the other thing that I definitely recommend is uh, weatherizing that attic access. Mm -hmm. um, they're real common. They can sometimes equate to, you know, 10, 15% of the overall air infiltration. Right. And that's, that's of a relatively tight house here. You've got bigger air infiltration issues. Right. But once you take care of some of those, this is going to be another key factor. Oh, yeah. So, holy mackerel. There's some serious airflow coming out of this thing. Wow. So here's your biggest, weakest link of your whole house so far, buddy. Yeah, so looking at that is definitely a... It's just the entire thing. Is yeah, that whole thing there. Sieve. Yep. So again, even though this is an interior wall, um, we're still getting that same air infiltration going on, which is real common, especially in older homes, where you've got, like, there's a real big spot that kind of comes down into the wall cavity, which is real common. Um, the tops of these walls are essentially open to a certain degree up into the attic space. Yeah. You know, so even though there's paneling on this side and on this side, there's air cavities that get into that from the top that allow that airflow right through the ceiling insulation, attic insulation down into these wall cavities. Yeah, so there we are right there. There's a little piece of plastic covering it, but that opens up right down into that wall. Okay. And so I could reach my hand right down in there. And that's, you know, that's the wall cavity. It goes all the way down. So that's wide open up here. And again, this is one of the areas we found from the attic area, uh, as well as under the blower door with the infrared, that this whole area in particular was really, really leaking. Yeah, all those That's gaps amazing. up there, yeah. completely exposed from the top. So we're going to need to expose all of that, and then in order to encapsulate it, whether it be chunks of blue board, uh, spray foam, yeah. a lot of different ways that we can do that. And then we can cellulose over the top of all that and completely okay. bury it. When we look at the whole picture, what's kind of great about this, if we look at the whole picture, you know, everything adding up, you know, we're looking around four to five thousand dollars for every single, you know, with the exception mm -hmm. of some of the labor involved in some of the prep work. Right. Um, so that might add, you know, another five hundred thousand dollars. It's hard to say if you're going to do some of it yourself or have a weatherization specialist work on right. that. Um, you'll have to get a quote from them. But that's kind of, you know, we're looking at an overall payback, you know, between five and six years. Um, you know, maybe even seven with you, seven or eight if you add the labor in there as well which is a pretty good return on investment. Uh, you know, when you're going to be saving, you know, this has a saving almost $800 a year yeah. in your heating costs. Well, keep me in the loop of your improvements yeah. for sure, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear how it all goes. Yeah, I am too, man. All right. Thanks. Great. Cut. <laughs>